Over the last 10 days, I've extensively tested the new Apple Watch Ultra for its sports and health tracking performance. And in this video, we will take a comprehensive look at the heart rate accuracy, sleep tracking performance, skin temperature measurements, GPS tracking, oxygen saturation measurements, and step counting accuracy of this brand new watch from Apple. Hello everyone, for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. Now, as I also mentioned in my first video, I think there are plenty of resources out there from which you can get the specs of the new Apple Watch Ultra, like Apple's website, for instance. So in this video, I will focus on independent and as much as possible unbiased performance testing of this top of the line Apple Watch. So let's dive into the test results. And I wanna start off by looking at the heart rate tracking results. I showed you a first test in which I did four training sessions in the last video, but I now have more than five times the data, which means I tested the Apple Watch Ultra during a total of 25 training sessions. And to my surprise, though a lot of the results are in line with what we have come to expect from Apple, there were some unexpected results. To test that, I'll compare the heart rate measurements of the Apple Watch Ultra against the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, which can generally record my heart rate very accurately. Now we'll start by looking at one of the easiest types of exercises for a watch to track, cycling indoors. And we'll be looking at a total of five interval spinning sessions. Now this involves very little movement or tension on my arms and will therefore produce less noise. And here we can see an overview of that accuracy over several rides. Each dot here is a single heart rate measurement, with along the horizontal axis the value according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, and on the vertical axis the value according to the Watch Ultra. The closer the points are to the blue line, the better the agreement, and the more dots there are, the darker black the color. As you can see, there's an extremely good agreement between the Watch Ultra and the ECG chest strap, as basically almost all points are super close to the blue line. The correlation, this R value up here, is also really good at a rounded value of 1.00 when we allow for two decimal points. The correlation value cannot be higher than one, so a rounded value of 1.00 is more or less perfect. And we can see why that is if we actually look at the individual training sessions. And here you can see my first interval spinning session for instance. Along the horizontal axis we have the time and my heart rate is along the vertical axis. In blue-green I plotted my heart rate according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap and in red is my heart rate according to the Watch Ultra. As you can see the two lines overlap very well, so good in fact that you can basically not see the red line at all. And that is basically what we see for all training sessions. The Apple Watch Ultra does not show any real deviations from the reference device in any of my testing so far. So this is looking really good. And just to prove that, that is also what we see in this third example training session right here. The overlap again is more or less perfect. However, let's put this into perspective by comparing it to 65 other watches I've tested over the last two years. That overview is displayed right here. The correlation value I was talking about before is the metric I will use for this, and that is displayed along the horizontal axis right here. We want that value to be as close to one as possible. And on the vertical axis, I ordered the watches from worst to best. So the further to the right and the higher the device is, the better is its correlation with the reference device. Now here I marked the Apple Watch Ultra in red, and as you can see, the Watch Ultra has the best score out of any of the watches I've tested over the last years. However, the results are a bit difficult to see because of the sheer number of devices, so let's zoom into the most important section. So if we now zoom in and get rid of the worst performing watches, we can see everything much more clearly. As you can see, the Apple Watch Ultra has one of the highest scores and is very close in performance to the other Apple Watches, like the new Apple Watch 8 and the 2022 Apple Watch SE. I think the differences in performance between these watches is smaller than the error margins of my testing, so we cannot say for sure if any of these devices are performing better or worse. Overall, all of them are doing very well. Overall, this means that the Apple Watch Ultra is doing really well when it comes to heart rate tracking during indoor cycling. 
Next, let's briefly take a look at two other types of exercises, which are easy and medium hard for a watch to track. Walking outside and running outside. Let's start with walking. And here you can see the results for the first walk. Again, in blue green are the measurements of the chest strap and in red the measurements of the Apple Watch. We see more or less an almost perfect overlap with no significant deviations from the ECG chest strap. So the Watch Ultra seems to be quite good at tracking heart rate while walking. And we see something similar for this second walk right here. There's basically a perfect match between the heart rate measured by the ECG device and the heart rate tracked by the Apple Watch Ultra. So this is again looking really good. Next, let's make things a bit more difficult and let's take a look at the performance of the Apple Watch Ultra while running. Now I only have a single test for this, but the results are super interesting. Here we can see the results for a short interval run that I did. Again in red is my heart rate according to the Apple Watch Ultra and in blue green is my heart rate according to the ECG chest strap. As you can see for each interval my heart rate increased, but the increase measured by the Apple Watch Ultra in red is much higher than the increase measured by the ECG chest strap. So basically in the high heart rate segments the Apple Watch Ultra recorded a too high heart rate. Now this is quite surprising as Apple watches have generally performed quite well for me. Problem is I'm not a runner so I've only got this single test right here. Luckily as a comparison I wore the Apple Watch Series 8 on the other wrist at the same time. And those results are displayed right here. As you can see the Series 8 which is also plotted in red right here was much closer to tracking the heart rate measured by the ECG chest strap compared to what we saw for the Apple Watch Ultra. So it's clear that the red and blue green lines are much closer together here than what we saw for the Apple Watch Ultra. So if we switch back for a second to the Apple Watch Ultra, the difference in results is quite striking. So why did the Ultra perform worse? Well, it could be by chance. Maybe for some reason the Ultra was not optimally positioned. However, I wore the watch quite tightly and I tried to make sure it was positioned correctly. Now potentially more likely, the added weight and bulk of the Ultra made it shift and move more on my wrist, making the heart rate readings taken by the Apple Watch Ultra less reliable than those taken by the Series 8, which is significantly lighter and smaller. I would like to redo this experiment though, but now using the Series 8 watch strap on the Ultra, since the Velcro strap allows for slightly better tweaking of the tightness of the fit. Still, since I wore the watch quite tightly, I'm not sure if this will make a difference. Next, let's take a look at another difficult type of exercise for a watch to track, cycling outside. While cycling outdoors, watches tend to shift a lot on the wrist as well, making accurate heart rate readings more difficult. To see how this affected the Apple Watch Ultra, I tested it during a total of 13 bike rides. Here we see a similar overview plot to before, but now for biking outside. As you can see, there's still a really good agreement between the Watch Ultra and the ECG chest strap, though some of the points are just a little bit further away from the blue line now. The correlation is also just a tiny bit lower compared to what we saw before for cycling indoors, with the correlation now for cycling outdoors being 0.99. However, this is still really good. And we can see that in even more detail if we look at some of the bike rides themselves. Again, in red is the Apple Watch Ultra and in blue green the Polar ECG chest strap. As you can see, the Watch Ultra in red overlaps almost perfectly with the ECG chest strap. And this is what we see for many bike rides, like this one right here, where we see a really good overlap between both the Apple Watch and the ECG chest strap. And I would say that almost all of the rides look as good as this, showing almost perfect overlap, as we also see in this third example right here. However, out of all the 13 rides that I tested the device for, there was really only one that showed some issues, and that is this ride right here. During this ride, there seemed to be some small moments of missing measurements, and around these moments, the heart rate accuracy decreased a bit. We can see three main moments when this happened. You can see that right here, right here, and also right here. Overall though, the Ultra is actually doing really well when it comes to cycling outside. We can again put this into perspective by looking at many of the other watches I've tested over the last years. Now similar to before, we will use the correlation with the ECG chest strap as the metric on the horizontal axis. And the better the agreement, the more to the top right the device is. As you can see, the Apple Watch Ultra, which I marked here again in red, is the best performing device when it comes to heart rate tracking based on this metric. 
Now, I don't think we can actually say it's the best device, but it's clearly amongst the best performing watches. However, again, the error margins are big enough that we cannot say for sure if the Apple Watch 8, SE, Apple Watch 7, or Ultra performed better. All of them performed really great, but roughly similarly. Also, some selected Huawei watches are close to the same performance, like the GT3 Pro and the Fit 2. Interestingly, while cycling with the Apple Watch Ultra, we see a much better agreement with the ECG chest strap compared to what we saw for running. But more testing is definitely needed to verify these results. However, so far, I would say at worst, these exercises represent medium heart exercises for a watch to track your heart rate. So let's now move on to one of the most difficult exercises for a watch to track, weightlifting. As I've mentioned previously, this is much more difficult because of the increased tension on my wrist and on my arm, making it much harder for the watch to get a clean heart rate signal. However, first a quick side note. If you're interested in the latest updates on the wearables I'm testing, I'm planning to start back up with my newsletter and posting more off the cuff things on my Instagram and my YouTube Shorts channel. So if you're interested in any of those, those are linked below. And of course, you would also make me really happy and it would help my efforts if you subscribe to this YouTube channel. But of course, this is totally up to you. Now, enough self-promotion. Let's take a look at the performance during weightlifting. And here we can see an overview of that accuracy, similar to before. The performance of the Apple Watch Ultra appears to be a tiny bit worse compared to what it had during cycling outside. However, still almost all points are along the blue line, so this is really good. The correlation is also still exceptionally high at 0.98. If we look at the individual training sessions, we can indeed see that the Watch Ultra follows along quite nicely with the ECG chest strap. Each time I do a set of exercises, my heart rate increases. And you can see that clearly based on this blue-green line right here, that's the ECG chest strap. The Apple Watch in red is generally able to follow along quite well with this, though at the peaks of my heart rate, sometimes it fails to take a full measurement, as you can see right here, for instance. That means there could be some missing heart rate data, which could be a potential issue, though generally it's performing quite good overall. So looking at some other training sessions, it looks quite good, as is also true for this example training session right here. Again, the red line of the Apple Watch Ultra follows along very well with the blue-green line of the ECG chest strap. We can again put this into perspective by comparing it to many of the other watches I've tested in the past. And we see those results in this overview right here. Again, the more to the top right, the better the consistency with the ECG chest strap. As you can see, relative to other watches, the Watch Ultra, which are marked in red, is doing really well. Which we can see even more clearly if we zoom into the best performing watches. We can see again that the Apple Watch Ultra is amongst the best performing watches, together with the Apple Watch Series 6, 7 and 8, and the new 2022 Apple Watch SE. So for weightlifting, the Apple Watch Ultra appears to be a solid choice, just as many other Apple Watches. So, based on my initial testing, I would conclude that the Apple Watch Ultra is a really good heart rate tracker, like basically all newer Apple Watches. It is one of the few watches that has decent performance during weightlifting, and it does really well during cardio, well at least for the most part. The only time it showed some issues was while running. However, this particular test was very limited since I just had a single run, so more testing is needed. Therefore, I would give the heart rate tracking of the Apple Watch Ultra four and a half out of five stars. Now, Apple Watches are normally my go-to devices for on the wrist heart rate tracking, and most of them therefore get five stars. However, the potential issue I saw while running means I deducted half a star from the Apple Watch Ultra score, at least for now. Let's now move on to something that Apple was late to implement, but immediately seems to have become the market leader at, sleep stage tracking. Now I showed you in a recent video that the new algorithm used in the Apple Watch Series 8 outperformed all other watches I tested so far. So let's take a look if this is also true for the Apple Watch Ultra. I tested the sleep stage tracking of the Apple Watch Ultra against an EEG device during six nights. Now like basically all smartwatches, the Watch Ultra will track your sleep throughout the night and let you know when it thinks you were in REM sleep, deep sleep, light sleep and awake. To check if the Apple Watch Ultra can detect my sleep stages, I'll compare it to an EEG device called the Dream 2 that can actually measure my brain waves and has been shown to be relatively reliable at sleep stage tracking. 
Now here I show an overview of the sleep test results. For getting an overall impression of how well the Apple Watch Ultra performs, the Dream 2 should likely be good enough. However, the gold standard would be polysomnography, which I would also like to try on the Apple Watch Ultra in the future. Now on top are the sleep stages as recorded by the EEG device, and on the left are the sleep stages as recorded by the Apple Watch Ultra. I wore both the EEG device and the Apple Watch to bed for six nights, and I will see how close the predictions of the Apple Watch are to those of the EEG device. Now each column here sums to 100%, meaning that we can see what percentage of each of the sleep stages according to the Dream 2 was predicted as each sleep stage by the Apple Watch Ultra. If they perfectly agree, all values on the diagonal should be 100%. Now first of all, we see that about 88% of what was deep sleep according to the EEG device was also predicted as deep sleep by the Apple Watch Ultra, which is pretty good. When deep sleep by the EEG device was predicted differently by the Apple Watch Ultra, it was predicted as light sleep at about 12%. And we can see that based on the individual nights. On top here we have the sleep stages according to the Dream 2 EEG headband, with the clock time along the horizontal axis and the sleep stages on the vertical axis. On the bottom we have a similar plot, but now for the Apple Watch Ultra. I've highlighted all the EEG recorded deep sleep in purple here. And for this night we can indeed see that the deep sleep detected by the EEG headband and the deep sleep detected by the Apple Watch Ultra show pretty good agreement. The second deep sleep segment overlaps almost perfectly, though the first segment was detected as being more fragmented by the Apple Watch compared to what the EEG device detected. And this second night also shows some good results, with a really good match between both devices when it comes to deep sleep tracking. The Apple Watch basically detected all the deep sleep that the EEG device also detected, but a bit extra, and also right here there's another extra segment of deep sleep. But overall the agreement looks very good. Light sleep agreement was also pretty good at about 80%, which again confirms that different models of Apple Watches all appear to be pretty consistent at sleep stage tracking. And if the Apple Watch Ultra did disagree with the EEG device on light sleep, it was mostly with deep sleep, though also sometimes with the other sleep stages. REM sleep agreement was also quite good at about 67% agreement with the EEG device. If it was predicted differently, it was mostly predicted as being light sleep at about 30%. And we can also see that clearly based on the individual nights. This is a similar plot to before, but now with the REM sleep as measured by the EEG device marked in red. Again, we see a pretty good agreement as almost all of the REM sleep segments detected by the EEG device are also detected by the Apple Watch Ultra. Just here in the beginning, the Apple Watch Ultra missed my first short REM sleep segment. Instead, it detected a wake time, which is a bit surprising. Overall, it still looks quite good though. And this second example night looks even a bit better, as basically all of the REM sleep segments as detected by the EEG device, which are marked in red, were also detected by the Apple Watch Ultra. This means we can also see my sleep cycles based on just the data from the Apple Watch Ultra. Now you go through roughly four to six sleep cycles each night, each one starting with light sleep and deep sleep, marked here in blue, and each one ending in REM sleep, marked here in red. As you can see, I likely had one, two, three, four, five complete sleep cycles this night. And we're able to see this based on just the data from the Apple Watch, which is actually something that most watches struggle with, so this is really good. And we mostly see the same thing for this third example night right here. Though in this case, the Apple Watch did not detect the last REM sleep segment that the EEG device detected. This also means that the Apple Watch basically detected all sleep cycles, but we wouldn't have been able to see the end of the last one. However, overall, I would say that the Apple Watch did really well. Awake detection also agreed very well at about 79% agreement. And any disagreement that it did have was with light sleep, which makes sense as light sleep is the closest sleep stage to being awake. And we can see that based on the individual nights. In general, the Apple Watch Ultra does tend to detect the same awake moments that the EEG device also detected, which are marked here in green, but it generally tends to detect some more awake moments as well, as you can see for this night right here, but also right here. 
And we can see the same thing for this second example night right here, where the EEG device detected some awake moments, which the Apple Watch Ultra also detected. But the Apple Watch additionally detected some extra awake moments as well. As you can see right here, right here, but also right here. Now I should note that the Apple Watch might intentionally be set to also detect really short awake moments, whereas the Dream 2 EG headband might be set to ignore these. So it might actually be an intentional difference. To put these results into context, we can compare the performance of the Apple Watch Ultra to that of 41 other watches I tested in the past. This graph shows an overview of the agreement of different watches with the EEG device. Along the horizontal axis we have the average agreement over the four individual sleep stages and on the vertical axis we have the agreement of the worst sleep stage. So the better the agreement the more to the top right the device is. And as you can see the devices with the best agreement so far were different Apple Watches. In this case the Apple Watch Series 7 which I tested for 18 nights, the Apple Watch Series 8 which I tested for 10 nights and the 2022 Apple Watch SE, which is based on four nights of data. Other good devices include different Fitbits, whoop straps, and a Withing Sleep Analyzer. If we now plot the Apple Watch Ultra in the same plot, which is marked here in red, we see that it is very similar in performance to the Apple Watch Series 7 and 8, and also the Apple Watch SE. This is again a very strong hint that all Apple Watches with the latest firmware use the exact same sleep tracking algorithm, which turns out to be a very good algorithm. So overall, the sleep stage tracking of the Apple Watch Ultra seems to be really good. And I suspect it does about as well as all other Apple Watches. Therefore, overall, I'd give the sleep stage tracking of the Apple Watch Ultra five out of five stars. Now one of the new features of the Apple Watch Ultra is that it also tracks your skin temperature throughout the night. I discussed what I think this feature could be used for in my video on the Apple Watch Series 8, which has the same sensor. However, in this video, I want to share some preliminary data on this sensor. Specifically, I want to compare the measurements taken by three devices. The Apple Watch Ultra, the Apple Watch Series 8, and the Aura Ring 3. That way we can see if the general trends in temperature that these devices measure are consistent. So let's take a look at those results. Unfortunately, the data that is accessible to me only has a single value for the whole night. So it does not seem that Apple stores the changes of temperature throughout the night. In this plot, you can see the recorded temperature by three different devices. The Apple Watch Ultra in red, the Apple Watch Series 8 in green, and the Aura Ring Generation 3 in blue. Now, I did not wear all devices for all nights, which is why there are some missing data. On the horizontal axis are the dates that I wore these devices, and on the vertical axis the temperature, with on the right the temperature in Fahrenheit for my American friends, and on the left the results in degrees Celsius for most of the rest of the world. The Apple Watches actually store the absolute temperatures, but the Aura Ring only stores the deviations between the nights. So to get them in the same range for this plot at least, I added the average temperature of all measurements for both Apple Watches to the measurements of the Aura Ring. So one value, the same value I added to all the nights, and in this way I could get them in the same plot. Now for most of the analysis, I will actually focus on the deviations, but I also wanted to show you the absolute values. As you can see, there are still quite some differences between all devices when we look at the differences between the nights, especially between the Apple Watch Ultra in red and the Apple Watch 8 in green. However, as I said, what is more interesting is looking at the temperature changes over the different nights. So let's take a look at that. And that is displayed right here, with now the changes, or in other words, the temperature trends on the vertical axis. So if a value was low relative to my normal temperature, a value is negative, and if it was high, it is positive. And what you would hope is that all three devices for the same night show either a positive or a negative temperature trend. So not that one shows a positive trend and the other a negative one. And at least this is partially good news. You can see right here, for instance, that for four out of the five nights that I wore all three devices, that they all agreed on whether the trend was positive or negative. Only the first night the Aura Ring did not agree. And in other good news, for all five nights that I wore both the Apple Watch Ultra and the Series 8, both Apple Watches always agreed on whether the trend was positive or negative. So even though there's definitely not enough data yet to draw any final conclusions, 
we do get a first impression that the Apple Watches are relatively consistent between one another when it comes to tracking skin temperature changes between nights, even when worn on different wrists. However, in my opinion, it will be most interesting to see if Apple Watches will be able to spot big changes in temperature, for instance, when you have the flu. However, this will require much more data and testing, but hopefully this is something I can do in the future. Let's now move on to another important feature of the Apple Watch Ultra, the location or GPS tracking. Supposedly, the Ultra has improved GPS tracking since it now uses the precision dual frequency GPS. To test that, I tracked my route during nine bike rides while I was cycling to and from work. And I wanted to test two things. One, how long does it take for the watch to get a GPS signal? And two, how well the GPS signals overlap when cycling the same route multiple times. These results are displayed here for five times I cycled to work. Now I started the activity the moment I was ready to leave and I did not provide the watch with any extra time to acquire the signal. The green markers indicates those moments that it connected its GPS signal. And as you can see, it connected basically instantly and also very accurately, which is really good. And if we now look at the consistency between the signals, this is also pretty good, though not as amazing as I would have expected since there's quite some deviation. So especially here in the beginning, we see some deviations, but as I move on there and cycle a bit further, the signals get more consistent. We can indeed see that the signals are much closer together. And we actually see that's true for a large part of the ride. The signals are really consistent and they stay really close together. So it appears to have needed some time to increase its accuracy, but it's doing much better after that. And when I'm cycling through this area of the hospital campus right here, where most watches struggle because of the trees in the buildings, the Apple Watch Ultra is very consistent in its tracking, so this is looking quite good. And for leaving work, we see more or less the same thing. The signal is acquired almost instantly, as you can see here. And this is actually better than what we've seen for most devices in terms of accuracy when acquiring the signal. And once it has the signal, it overlaps really well in the beginning of the ride, as you can see right here. The signals are very consistent. There is one moment of deviation right here where one of the signals is different from the others and actually has me going through some buildings. And also right here, we see a bit more deviation in the tracking. And we've seen that before in this area where apparently it's a bit more tricky to get a good GPS signal. However, overall, the tracking is quite good and pretty consistent, though there are definitely some moments with a bit more deviation. Still, most of the time, it is pretty consistent. Overall, I'm happy with the GPS tracking performance of the Apple Watch Ultra. It locks onto my signal really fast and accurately, and it tracks my route relatively consistently. Therefore, overall, I'd give the GPS tracking 4.5 out of 5 stars. Though I still have to quantify it, the quality seems to be a bit better than what we saw for the Apple Watch Series 8, which makes sense as the Ultra should have slightly better hardware. Next, let's take a look at a feature of the watch that became more important as the COVID pandemic started, namely measuring your oxygen saturation, or in other words, SpO2. To test the oxygen saturation measurements, I wanted to see if the Apple Watch Ultra ever detects a low oxygen saturation when it's not supposed to. And I did this by taking measurements with the watch when I knew that my SpO2 was at normal levels. I also discussed this in my last video, but I now almost doubled the data to a total of more than 120 measurements. I also systematically swapped the watch between both wrists, and that way I hope to get a good representation of the measurements it can take. What was different this time is that I also took measurements in a colder environment, making sure that my hands and arms were cooler than normal, which could constrict the blood vessels in my arm, making it harder for the watch to get a good signal. At the same time, I also recorded my oxygen saturation with a dedicated finger pulse oximeter. Now at ground level, my oxygen saturation should be in my normal range, which is generally between 97 and 100%, and it should not fall below roughly 95%. However, when the effective oxygen concentration is much lower, as it is for instance in a low air pressure environment, my oxygen saturation can drop below 90%. And the same can happen when you have certain medical conditions like for instance sleep apnea or a respiratory infection. And here are the measurements I took at ground level, which is a combination of measurements at normal temperatures and those in a colder environment. On the left are all the measurements taken with the Apple Watch Ultra. 
and on the right, matching measurements taken with the finger pulse oximeter. On the vertical axis are the SpO2 values, with each dot representing a single measurement. As you can see, the Apple Watch Ultra on the left generally recorded SpO2 values in my normal range, and only twice recorded an SpO2 value below 95%. In both cases, this was 94%, so not bad at all. Now generally, I would say this is really good, as many other watches tend to measure a way too low SpO2 value. And because I also tested it when my hand and arm were cold, this means that the Apple Watch Ultra even did well under these circumstances. And we can see that even more clearly if we display these results as a histogram. In this case, the SpO2 values are along the horizontal axis, and the larger the bar, the more often this value was recorded. As you can see, the Apple Watch Ultra, which is displayed here in red, recorded slightly lower values than the finger pulse oximeter in blue, but basically all of them are within my normal range. Now the most commonly measured value by the Apple Watch Ultra is 98%, which is actually also the most commonly measured value by the finger pulse oximeter. So overall, this is not looking too bad. So this is looking quite good for the Apple Watch Ultra, though I still have to test it in a low oxygen environment Overall, based on the testing I've done so far, I'd give the SpO2 measurements of the Apple Watch Ultra 4 out of 5 stars. Now the next thing I tested on the Apple Watch Ultra is the step counting accuracy. To test the step counting accuracy, I went out and took exactly 8000 steps with the Apple Watch Ultra. Now I do not like counting 8000 steps in my head, which is why I counted each step manually using this tally counter. Let's take a look at those results. Now here are the results for those 4,000 steps, where I wore the Apple Watch Ultra on my left arm. Along the horizontal axis we have the time, and the total number of steps counted is on the vertical axis. Now the diagonal blue-green line represents the steps counted by the Apple Watch Ultra, and the vertical blue lines indicates the moment it should have counted 1,000 steps more. So the first blue line indicates where it should have counted 1,000 steps, the second 2,000, 3,000, and the last one 4,000. As you can see, the Apple Watch was pretty consistent and generally very close to the steps it should have counted, which is good, though it might have counted just a few too little steps here near the end. Now I actually wore the new Apple Watch Series 8 at the same time, but now on the other wrist, which is displayed here in the same plot but now in red. We can actually see that both watches performed more or less similarly, both consistently counting more or less the correct number of steps. I actually repeated this experiment, but now switching the watches to the opposite wrists. As you can see, the watch was again pretty close to the actual number of steps it should have counted, though there were some deviations. Especially here in the beginning it might have undercounted, though this might also have been due to the way that Apple stores the step data, which is in groups of steps and not the actual continuous number, which is also why you get this staircase-like shape in the plot. Again, if we now display the Apple Watch Series 8 data in red, we see that this performs more or less the same as the Apple Watch Ultra again, though it might just have counted a few more steps. Overall though, both watches seem to perform very similarly. So this is also looking quite good. However, the next question is if the Apple Watch Ultra ever counts steps when it's not supposed to, for instance when doing activities that do not involve walking. Those results are displayed here for 5 activities on the vertical axis running, walking, weightlifting, spinning, and biking. On the horizontal axis is the number of steps per minute counted by the Apple Watch for each of these activities. Ideally, it would count close to zero steps during all activities that do not involve any type of walking or running. Now, as you can see, when I was running, it counted about 120 steps per minute, as is displayed here on the top right. Now, in reality, this was an interval run with much walking, so this number actually makes sense. When I was walking, as is displayed here in blue, it counted about 80 to 90 steps per minute, which is a normal walking pace. Interestingly, when cycling outside, it actually counted close to zero steps per minute most of the time, which is really good, as you can see here in red on the bottom left. Surprisingly though, while spinning, it did tend to count a few steps, but only about three steps per minute, which is negligible, as you can see here in green. Now, while weightlifting, it also counted some steps, as you can see here in purple, and a bit more even than while spinning. Now, I actually do all my lifting at home in a very small area, so there should be very few steps. I do think that the estimate given by the Apple Watch is slightly more than I would have expected, but overall, it's close enough to the real number of steps that it wouldn't bother me too much. 
So overall, the step counting performance of the Apple Watch Ultra is quite good. When you're walking, it counts roughly the correct number of steps. And while you're doing other activities, it counts very few steps. Therefore, overall, I'd give the step counting accuracy four and a half out of five stars. Overall, I'm really happy with the performance of the Apple Watch Ultra. It has the same amazing heart rate tracking that all Apple Watches have, though in this case the increased weight might have influenced the accuracy during more vigorous exercise. The sleep tracking is also really good, and Apple seems to have the best sleep tracking out there at the moment. The only problem I have with the sleep tracking is that when you sleep outside of the window that you indicate, it might not track your sleep. Unfortunately, I never nap, so I've not been able to test it myself. However, people have left comments in my other videos. Now the GPS tracking also appears to be really solid and at least a bit better than the other Apple Watches. The temperature sensor gave a good first impression, though I really want to know if it can detect large changes in temperature as well. The SpO2 tracking seems pretty reliable, though I must admit more testing is needed in a low oxygen environment. And finally, the step counting is also quite accurate, and it does not count too many steps when it's not supposed to count steps, which is really good. Therefore, overall, I'd give the Apple Watch Ultra 4.5 out of 5 stars. Now before giving you my final recommendation, I do have to mention some of the limitations of the test that I showed in this video. First of all, the results reflect how the watch performed on my physiology, and it might vary depending on for instance your skin tone, gender or body mass. Second, collecting more data and software updates could change the results. However, all of this being said, I still think that based on this testing, I can say that the Apple Watch Ultra would be one of my first choices as an all-round health and fitness tracker, especially given the better battery life compared to the normal Apple Watch Series 8. However, all of that is only true if money is no concern. I don't think it's worth it for most people to spend $800 or even more on the new Apple Watch Ultra. You will get the most important functionalities for a fraction of the price with the new 2022 Apple Watch SE, as I showed you in a recent video. So for most people, this is the Apple Watch I would recommend. Now, if you want to buy an Apple Watch, another device, or anything at all on Amazon for that matter, even something as small as toilet paper, and at the same time support this channel, there are different affiliate links in the description below that do not cost you any extra, and some even provide a discount. Now, if you want to know more about the performance of the new Apple Watch Series 8 and my best recommendation, the new 2022 Apple Watch SE, check out my complete reviews on these watches right here. Now, I hope that this video provided you with some value. Thank you so much for watching and catch you in the next video.